Now our first speaker. After studying economics at the University of California, Berkeley, the hotbed of student unrest in the US, he began teaching at UBC in 1968. He served as dean of the Sauter School at UBC. He chaired the Surrey City Development Corporation. And he is on the Canada Pension Board, the investment group that is responsible for all $300 billion of our pensions. So for five decades, he has warned governments that their decisions would cause house prices to dramatically escalate. Global Civic Think Tank believes it is time we listen to his advice. Please welcome Michael Goldberg. I have a little agenda. Sam asked me to uh, concoct that we might uh, attack at the uh, civic think tank. And uh, these are the issues I thought we'd take on. Housing affordability, uh, a small one. Uh, we rank, uh, we always pride ourselves on how outstanding Vancouver is. Here we rank as the third least affordable city in North America, so we're right at the top of the heap. Um, we also rank number two, according to TomTom, Tom, as being the second most congested city in North America. So again, we're in the top three. And both of those things need to be treated together. And while we're at it, we might as well look at the regional economy, which so far has been doing quite well and is closely linked to these other two. And then what we're doing this for, we're doing this so we can create an affordable and vital and enjoyable city, something we tend to forget about. Uh, I'm going to put up two slides. Um, you'll note from both of them, after decades of teaching, I've perfected the skill of taking relatively simple ideas and making them unrecognizable. <laughs> These charts will prove that, and I'll try to pick them apart and make them simple. But they sum up what we need to do, and they give us some clues on how we can do it. So the first one, there's an inextricable link between the urban economy, urban housing, and urban transportation. Uh, transportation and land use are often said as different sides of the same coin. Uh, Land use supplies the demand for transportation, and transportation allows us to occupy different lands for different purposes. So when we look at this, we see that this is a system, and we have to treat any solutions as a system, that we can't just look at something isolated. We tend to forget that housing costs are not just the costs of housing occupation. It's also travel costs. So the two together, transportation costs and occupancy costs, are what constitutes housing. Given that we're number three in housing expense and number two in congestion, that doesn't augur very well for housing affordability and occupancy. It does mean, though, if we treat the two together, we can get some real benefits. So the current investments we're making in the Broadway line and the Broadway plan to significantly raise densities, I think will have a double-barreled effect of allowing us to lower the cost of occupancy and travel together and benefit the region. This one is even more complicated, but it's equally simple. What this says is we don't operate in a vacuum. Our urban system, housing, transportation, and the economy are a subsystem of a global system of cities and the global economy. And part of why we've been experienced in the kind of housing price run up we have is because we've had a very prosperous economy, lots of people moving in from the rest of the world and from the rest of Canada, and the people in BC have had rising wages. You put that together and it means house prices will go up unless we have at least as much supply coming on the market 
as we have demand rising. And that's not been the case. I like to paraphrase Bill Clinton, who said in response to a reporter about why they were taking the economic actions they were, and he said, it's the economy, stupid. Well, I can paraphrase that for housing prices, it's supply, stupid. Economics one says if prices rise, it's either because there's not enough supply or there's too much demand or a combination of the two. You can't have rising prices if there's an excess of supply. So clearly there's not enough supply and we have to add to supply very significantly. And that's the simple message and I hope our new civic government in Vancouver is able to do that. Now all this has to take place in a system of governance. Uh, Sam will invite me back for another seven minutes to talk about that, but all of the levels of government matter. And we're finally seeing the provincial government and the federal government saying, we have a role to play and we can tweak the supply system at the local level if we seek to do so in a creative way. So I find that all to the good and we don't have a greatest governance, governance system for the region yet, but we'll talk about that future. So how do I close? To succeed and meet the housing challenges, we have to think in this set of systems, the global system and the urban subset. When we put it in that context, we see that we're facing uh, a huge run up in demand because of people moving in, because of a very strong economy. And the only thing we can do is find ways to add to supply. So we need to provide more and affordable housing choices, much more diversity. We have to think in terms of transportation and housing. We have to think of continuing to diversify the economy so more people can enjoy more prosperity in more kinds of jobs. And we need to provide excellent movement for people and goods, both internally and internationally through the port and through YBR. And we also have to make sure that we have a resilient, enjoyable, and safe region in the face of inevitable change in climate. So thanks very much, and appreciate you coming out on this wonderful Vancouver rainy day.